Hey everybody, a while back I put up a video on uh, how signals work, uh, what they mean, the aspects, uh, the colors and all that, and uh, one of my subscribers, uh, BFU Railroad, <laughs> it never struck me funny until just now, but uh, anyway, BFU Railroad. I uh, was curious about some of the signals at ends of sightings when I did the uh, on that one where I had the where you would see a yellow over yellow on an approach to a control point and there would be different red over this and the different signals that you could get going into a sighting or out onto double track. So I put one together. Uh, it took me a while to do it because uh, I don't have time to go out there and. Uh, manipulate the system to create these signals. I'm too busy for that. So uh, whenever I was in an area and I saw one of those uh, indications, I would uh, take a picture of it. So here we go with uh, what's going to be essentially part two of what railroad signals mean. This will be what railroad signals entering control points mean. Hope you enjoy it. Okay. I want to start by going back to the yellow over yellow at the intermediate signal, like we I showed in the uh, piece on the automatic signals, the approach diverging route signal. And that is the name of that signal, and, and its indication is proceed, prepare to advance on diverging route at the next signal at the prescribed speed for that turnout. and. Uh, as usual, the top head always governs movement up the main line. So when you see the approach diverging route, the yellow over yellow, the top head is yellow and it's telling you that the next top head you come to is going to be red. And it's because the switch is going to be reversed and that you are going to be taking the turnout when you get to the next signal. You could get there and have a red over red. The dispatcher could decide to stop you before you go into the turnout. but. Uh, Generally, yellow over yellow, approach diverging, you're going to have a red over some clear signal. And we'll go over those when we get there. Okay, the next signal we'll talk about is the yellow over green, the approach clear 50. That is a proceed signal, uh, and it is used in a couple of different uh, ways. In higher speed signaling than we use uh, around here, it can be used for passenger trains uh, that instructs them that they can proceed at whatever speed they're going, prepared to uh, slow down to 50 miles an hour at the next signal. When it is used in the approach of a control point, as it is around here, uh, it's used for uh, equilateral turnouts, equilateral switches. We have one at uh, East Bina and one at North Bakersfield where the uh, switch where the turnouts are equal uh, most control points where you're going into a siding or onto double track you have the main line going straight and then a turnout that that bends off of that at an equilateral switch you don't have one track going straight with another one bending off of it it's more like a, a Y and uh, those are higher speed turnouts and uh, switch points are longer, the turnouts are longer, and if the speed limit is 50 miles an hour, as it is at those places around here, you'll have that yellow over green signal that is telling these trains that they're approaching a diverging route on a 50 mile an hour switch. And if a freight train is exceeding 50 miles per hour on the approach to that, he has to slow down to 50 miles per hour. He, he doesn't do the same as a freight train uh, continuing at the same speed prepared to slow down to 50. He has to slow down to 50. It takes Freight trains are obviously heavier than passenger trains and uh, so they take a little longer to slow down and they can proceed through that turnout at 50 miles per hour. Okay, uh, we're gonna start getting into the signals you will see at a control point after you have passed the diverging route signals, whatever aspect those are. And uh, the first one, um, and as I did with the mainline automatic signals, uh, we'll start with the most restrictive and work our way up to the least restrictive. And uh, 
the one of the other differences between the signals I did before, which were automatic signals, which work automatically, they just give you information on the track out ahead of you. These ones will be manual signals at control points. And, and manual signals at control points are signals that are controlled by a dispatcher. And uh, the dispatcher can hold those signals at stop to keep a train held out uh, for whatever reason. And then whenever the dispatcher is ready for the train to move, the dispatcher can clear that signal. And a clear signal is anything other than stop. So anyway, the uh, first signal we'll talk about is the red over red. And that is stop. Uh, that is the name of the signal. And its indication is stop before any part of a train or engine passes the signal. And, the, and if a train has a stop at a control point because there's a problem, the signal's red because of a, anything other than the dispatcher having put that signal at stop, that's when they call the signal department we go out there and figure out what's wrong. But until we get there and get things rolling again, the dispatcher can flag a train past a red signal through a control point. And they flag a train past a red signal, uh, they proceed at what's called restricted speed. Uh, restricted speed is uh, called the half the distance rule, or I'm not sure exactly what it's called, but uh, a train can proceed past the red signal, moving at a speed where they could stop within half the distance of what obstruction is to be seen, uh, whether it's a switch line against them, a broken rail, something uh, across the track. So if a train could see something 500 feet out there, they would have to be able to stop in 250 feet. And uh, restricted speed is never more than 20 miles per hour. But anyway, the dispatcher can give a train permission to proceed past a red signal through a control point. And uh, when the train came to the next clear signal, he would be able to start uh, moving on whatever indication that signal was giving him. If it was a yellow or a green or whatever, he would proceed based on the information that signal was giving him. Okay, the next signal we'll look at is the red over flashing red. Uh, the name of that signal is restricting and its indication is proceed at restricted speed not exceeding prescribed speed through a turnout if applicable. Say that five times real fast. Uh, uh, the, the shot that I got of this particular red over flashing red was, was at the uh, entrance to the Mojave Yard and the local was going to go into the yard which is non-signaled. So the flashing red was restricting his speed through the CTC part of the interlocking and then out into the yard through a reverse switch that would take him out into the yard. So there's no signal for him to go into, so he has to proceed at restricted speed. Uh, there are, are other applications for the uh, flashing red, uh, train moving through a turnout into an occupied siding or track. Uh, there are a couple of other applications for that too, but those are pretty much the ones that we use around here. Okay, uh, red over yellow. That is the most common signal at a control point when a train is going to go into a siding or onto a, another main track, and that is the diverging route signal, and that signal tells them that uh, Top signal is red, that means that there's no move down the main line, that signal is red, the switch is reversed, the train is going through the turnout, and to proceed through the turnout at the prescribed speed of that turnout, prepared to stop at the next signal. Okay, the next signal we'll talk about is the red over flashing yellow. And, and the name of that signal is diverging advance approach. And uh, the indication of that signal is, the, as usual, the uh, top signal is red. That's because the main line is not in play. The switch is reversed. The bottom signal, the flashing yellow, is telling the train that he's going to 
go through that turnout at the prescribed speed for that turnout, prepared to stop at the second signal. And as I talked about in the uh, automatic signal segment that I did, by the time that train reaches the second signal, if he goes past this flashing yellow, the red over flashing yellow, that means at that time, the second signal is red. But if he's following a train or if the dispatcher just hasn't cleared a, a signal ahead of that yet, if the dispatcher clears that signal, a train has moved past that next signal into another block, by the time he gets to that second signal, it's most likely going to be uh, yellow, flashing yellow, or green. So anyway, that is the red over flashing yellow. Okay, the next signal we're talking about is a red over green. That is the uh, diverging clear signal. That's the name of that signal. Its indication is proceed on diverging route, not exceeding prescribed speed through that turnout. Now at Southern Pacific, we didn't have red over greens around here. Uh, red, over, uh, red over yellow was, was the most favorable signal you could get through any turnout on the mountain. We had some uh, red over flashing yellows up the valley, but we didn't have any of these greens uh, until we started using the more modern micro microprocessor-based signal systems that Union Pacific installed. But anyway, historical note. But anyway, that is the red over green, the diverging clear. Okay, there are other aspects that can be seen at control points depending on the uh, railroad. Uh, like I said, over, over at the Mojave Yard, at the interlockings there are are other types of signals uh, but these are the basics and uh, a lot of the aspects that you can get at control points we don't use on the Union Pacific around here they probably use them in other places where they have uh, passenger trains higher speed uh, railroads uh, more tracks and crossovers uh, to you know approaches at interlockings for uh, terminal railroads, uh, commuter railroads. They probably use all kinds of funky stuff there, but I don't know anything about those because I've never worked on one. All I know is what I work with here. And then uh, when you're approaching a control point where you're going to take the main line, where you're not going to take the turnout, the signals, the, the signal on the top head is going to give you your indication. Generally, the bottom head in that situation is dark. It's not lit at all. Some There are some locations where both heads will light. Most of our signals are approach lit signals. They don't light until a train comes on the approach to those signals, but some of them are lit all the time. And a lot of times when those are constantly lit locations like that are, the top and bottom heads will remain lit. But in most applications, the bottom head is dark. And then the uh, Top head would be just like the automatic signals. The indications would all be the same. Your red, yellow, flashing yellow, green. Those those signals would all have the, those signals would all have the same indications. So I'll link that other video to this one, and so you can go back and look at that if you like, and uh, see what that one's about. Anyway, thanks for coming along. Uh, Hope it wasn't too stuttery. Uh, a lot of these signals, I'm not familiar with what they're actually called or what the indication is technically. And even still, I didn't uh, go through the entire uh, description of the indication. I'm trying to keep it as simple as I can. Uh, sometimes that's hard to do with signaling. I never really realized that until I started doing these videos and uh, tried to remember all the stuff that I already know and, uh, and also gather some new information that uh, I'm not used to. Uh, Southern Pacific, we used, instead of a flashing red, we used what was called a lunar signal. And that was uh, called lunar because it was about the color of the moon. It was kind of a bluish white, beautiful signal. And that's what we used for uh, going into occupied sightings or out onto non-signal territory, etc. cetera. Uh, so when uh, Union Pacific uh, came along and started installing the new microprocessor-based signaling systems, uh, we got rid of the lunars. Those were in the old uh, searchlight signals. And uh, 
when we put in the new color light signals, uh, the three aspect LED type that we use in most applications. We still do have some incandescents around here, but not very many. But uh, they got rid of the lunars and went to flashing reds. And uh, I think it's kind of a shame. I always thought the lunar signals looked really cool. So anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, BFU, BFU Railroad, uh, thanks for asking the question, and I hope this uh, was satisfactory. And if you have any uh, questions or comments or complaints, leave them in the comments below or shoot me an email, and uh, we will talk to everybody later. See ya.